All right, it's 7 o'clock, so I will call to order the Board Grove Public Library Board of Trustees regular meeting if we can all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Staying in the, the MRF plan or moving to IMRF. 
Most of our staff moved to IMRF, though we did have some people that stayed in the MRF plan. And while we have people that are participating in the plan either actively employed by us or have retired and receiving or retired and receiving payments, um, we will continue to have to pay into that. That's a one-time fee, um, and that's actually prepared by an actuary who then gives us a, a recommended contribution to keep the plan at a certain, you know, funded at a certain level. So this year, actually, that two hundred and eight thousand dollars is about $13,000, $14,000 less than I had budgeted for for this year. So that's a, a, it's a little bit of a savings for it. But that's what that's for. Is that generally take, take, taken out in August? Is um, it's usually taken out when we get the valuation. So depending on when they give us a draft, because it's actually for this year. So, um, But it is probably in the second half of the year is usually when we've got it in the past. So, and IMRF we pay monthly. This is again just a one-time annual fee. Right. So, though we combine when I'm doing the budget, I combine both of those things in one budget line called retirement. Uh -huh. so. mm -hmm. the, the, the same page, fifteen to fifty-eight. What, what is the brain fuse? Brain fuses are uh, one of our online uh, databases. It's a homework help sort of uh, database. So, uh, if people, uh, if, if, if it's a variety of ages. It's like from kindergarten up through college age. I mean, it's you know online help. You can go in if you've got to write papers. If you need math help, if you need science help, that kind of thing. But it's an online database, and that's a that's a one time a year payment. I'm sorry, I, I totally talked over. Did you have other questions? Did I? Yeah, but it's going up quite a lot. Well, I never. Yes. Well, I um the in 1432 and 1433. Yes. Are those. Do you have payments, the CMFP? Yeah, I see it. Thanks, you remember? Mm -hmm. 14, 1432. 1432 and 1433? Yeah, they were two separate payments, but to the same place. They're for, um, what are they for? It's on the tip of my tongue. Do you remember? We'll have to look that up. I can't yeah. remember what they're for. I don't remember either. Something with Morton Grove? Is that yes. what the yeah. yeah. yes. yes. store? It's with the Morton Grove Village. Um, Just so it was duplicate, so. Yes, yeah, it's, it's the same. Yeah, because it was it was um, one. I'm thinking it's the elevator. Because we have two elevators. Oh, um, uh, four and two separate bells? Yeah. That's, well, they were put in at different times. Oh, or it could oh, be. Wow. It, it could right. be. Oh. It could be the 6200. I, I was going to say, I think they're, 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 I don't think it's elevated. Okay, it's elevated. It's I don't think it's But there's so. one for this building and one for 6200. We'll get the, what the CMF. The alarm? <laughs> no, it wouldn't be the alarm. I know where it is. I'll look we'll, 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 it up. Okay. Yeah. Oftentimes with that, if there's two separate ones, especially to the same place, at least for right now, it's because we're paying for something in this building and then something for 6200. I see. So, okay. But we'll. I've, I've um, 1449. We we've had payments to um, USA. That, that's that's a high one. Eighty eight thousand five hundred. That is. It just changed. That was for the um, DVD. Oh yes, oh, the, that's oh, the that's the first DVD. one of the DVD. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, then I, I have some if you don't end up asking them. I just have one. Um, okay. I just, there's a couple times during the lineups, AmericanEagle.com. Yep. They are our um, website. They host our website. Oh. So. <laughs> I, I have a couple, too. Yeah, go. Uh, I'm sure we'll fit. 1421V. That's voided shock. So you added $300. That's why it's a minus. Right. So, right, right, right. right. It's a, but then it comes up again later. So, 1421, that's 326. And then 1421V is a little bit down. It's further down. Yeah. But on the next that's page, a credit. it's 1445, but it's between the line. Yeah. Okay. It's for 458 on this page. Okay. Okay. Um, I have a question about card services. There's a $4,245 under uh, 1414. That's 
for the MB financial credit card that we use? But shouldn't these items be broken down to what they're what are out there? Right. They are entirely. Yeah. Okay. So there's usually so Carlotta when she does checks, there's yeah. um, when our monthly bill comes in and they're all broken down by the by the account that the, there's because we get one big uh, bill yeah, no, that has the six like credit cards, right? We're keeping the yeah. accounts, and then we um, they're broken down internally and they're budgeted correctly on the income statement. So we don't. Oh, okay. So, so like you know, someone could have paid for books. Someone could have you know, updated you know, updated a membership. Someone could have registered for a program. So those are all different account lines. So they're okay. they're broken down internally, and Carlotta does see that when whoever okay. is the, the okay. finance person. So every time the person is coming sure up, somewhere they're working. Mm -hmm. Okay, because there's another bigger one. Right, because you're looking at two months worth yes. of stuff. Yes. So just depending on what was charged that particular month, because myself and then the department heads all had credit cards, and you know, depending on what we had to purchase, um, we purchased a lot of things with credit, you know, because the kitchen, that kind of thing. Right. Okay. So, yeah. I have some questions on the statement, but if you want to finish. Oh, with the charge. Okay. Oh, okay. Please. Uh, the CMFP is the elevator. Oh. So it's a Chicago Metro. Something something. It's the fire, <laughs> fire, 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 fire prevention, but it's an it's an it's related to the elevator. We have an elevator in this building, and there's an elevator in that building. So it's a two two elevators. Yep. I was just curious what the Burchard company was. Thirteen eighty two. For four thousand. Oh, okay. What was it? That's the new book drop that we purchased. Oh, okay. Um, I know it's a lot of money, but this is actually you substantially it less. less. Yeah. It's almost half of what you would pay for a new book drop. They're insanely expensive. So. In fourteen eighty seven, yes. there are vistas. I feel like as a librarian, that's something that it is not our familiar, um, but it's <laughs> our annual payment to our magazine shop. Okay, that's why it's not familiar. <laughs> okay. And I, I, when does our current lease? whatever you want to call it, uh, with St. Martha. Uh, when do we re we renegotiate that about? in October? Okay. So I'm I've not had an opportunity to reach out to Father Dennis or the Archdiocese okay. at this point. Um, I am going to <coughs> let them blame know it on me. That, um, well, we're happy to pay. It at some point it becomes a little bit like to have it go take off. advantage yes. of because it goes up a hundred dollars yes. every year. Mm -hmm. And we're not getting more spaces, we're not mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. So so yeah, that will come up in actual burn. Just tell them we brought it up and said yeah. that you had to talk to them about it. Yeah, right. Pardon? Yeah. Oh we we get yeah. parking spaces from St. Martha and so pay. most of the parking that is behind the library is actually stuff um, and spaces that we rent from St. Martha's Church. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. And every year it goes up $100. $100, yeah. but we don't get another space for that. <laughs> so for, for a long time, we've negotiated directly with St. Martha's, and then a few years back, maybe five or six years ago, all of that switched to the Archdiocese in Chicago. So I think that there's, I don't know how much St. Martha's can right. do about it, but yeah. you know, our lease with them, we signed a three-year lease, and it's up right. in October, so we need to renegotiate that with them. So. Or you sign a three-year lease, but they raise it every year a hundred dollars. Yeah, it's this in the lease. Is, it's written, it's written in the lease. This and is very you, common when you uh, rent office space yeah. and things like that. So, I mean, if you need those spaces, but, right? No, I mean, I, I just, and right now it's not. It's about twelve thousand dollars. Yeah, what we pay every mm -hmm. year. So, which is a little crazy. I yes. <laughs> But what choice have we, you know? Right. Well, oh, that's a monthly bill. Uh, a thousand dollars a month. It's about a thousand dollars a month. It's a thousand a month. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. You had a question about the. Um, yeah, just a couple of the items. Oh, items. Does anyone, is that all the time to do questions done? On the uh, income statement. For 2017. Uh, Okay. I'm looking at anything that's over. What, what number did you say? Revenue number 10, 3910. Okay, it's not um, 3900, excuse oh, me. Oh, 3900. Miscellaneous. Oh, that's a revenue line, and that is uh, 
money that we anticipate that we will get in. Okay. So by showing a I so we don't, read we don't this really, report because it's backwards. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's accounting. So we don't really expect to get any money from that because we don't have well, we, we have, don't we have, have any unincorporated right. space that someone would come in and say, I need to purchase a card. Yeah. So um, that's the vending, right? This is where the extra money came from to this part. For that. So um So they're two fifty two was even the twenty five dollars? No, the, at the end, the use percentage. Oh, we're looking at the value. Are you? Yeah, yeah, at the end, yeah. two fifty two. Right. So we had gotten so the twenty five dollars. I have to check with Jeff where that came from. Um, I believe that that is associated with a business card. So I need to verify that for next year. But but when we budget, I don't. I don't normally really budget to get money like that because there's, no, I, I understand. it's just so unlikely that because that I have trouble it. reading this report. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so on the revenue side, if and there's parentheses. I did here, I still have to sleep. Okay. Yeah, actually we've got parentheses on all kinds of things. So yeah. shouldn't, but, <laughs> but in the current year to date, if there's parentheses around something. It should be under. Yeah. But yeah. it's over. Yeah. It's over. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, so if you look at the current, if you look at the revenue side and you look at unused, uh huh. It's in parentheses. If you have a parentheses for that, that means that that's money that is over what we budgeted for. In other words, we did better than we thought. We were. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. If there's no Basically parentheses English. around that. We have not yet received the money that we budgeted for, or that we thought we would get. So under interest income? That we got much more than we had budgeted for. Where are we getting this kind of It's interest? the same interest, or the same lines, <clears throat> but well, there's a couple different things. Um, for a while, interest was nothing. I yeah. mean, we were getting virtually nothing. And so um, we, we budgeted very low, because we were <coughs> estimated very conservatively oh, as, okay. in terms of the interest income. So that you know, we made sure we had enough money to spend without right. relying on you know over relying on interest money. Um, we have <clears throat> we are getting more interest money through uh, converting some of our accounts from Northern Illinois or from Northern Trust to MB Financial. We're getting a higher percentage of interest on that checking account. It's an interest bearing account. Um, I also believe that uh, our money that you is share in with the rest of us. Pardon. You want to share with the rest of us? <laughs> The money that we have in PMA, which is um, not invested in um, any investment vehicles, but it is an in in interest-bearing money market checking account, uh, we get a fairly substantial uh, interest interest out of that. So, like if you looked at the total portfolio uh, report just in, the, in last month, we earned fifty-eight hundred dollars in interest. On that. A lot more than I so, yes. <laughs> So, so at the top, if it's in parentheses, it means we've gotten more money than we thought we were going to get. If there's no parentheses, it means we haven't received as much as we had budgeted for. And it's the opposite-ish. <laughs> I think we need to write this out. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's, um, it's accounting. So I, it is confusing, though. I agree. It is confusing. Yeah. But it's, that's why I didn't go into business. Because I took one accounting class. I said, not for me. <laughs> Does anyone else have any other questions about the income statement? We are approximately 66.6% through the year. And overall, we've spent our total expenses within 65.59%. So we're pretty much right now. Areas that are like right at 100% or 99% or around that um, often reflect those kind of annual payments that we have to make. Any other questions? Can I get a motion then to uh, accept, approve uh, the treasurer report? Motion to approve. I'll second. And that will do a roll call. Um, Gonzalez? Yes. Green? Yes. Mr. Chair? Yes. Monson? Yes. Novick? Yes. Pelletier? Yes. 
I realize I skipped right over the public comments agenda items only, but we don't seem to have any public so <laughs> Facilities report, I don't think there is anything. And then the policy committee. Okay. Carlotta, I guess. <laughs> Um, so we, uh, the policies I actually have under new business. So yeah, we do. Can, yeah, oh, they are actually okay. new business. So okay. I just want to report that you met. And that okay. Yeah. Okay, we met. And we did not really make some recommendations or not. Okay. Yeah. And now yeah. director's report. Because mm -hmm. yeah. they're technically new business. Oh, yeah. Um, I did email uh, late this afternoon as well as gave you a hard copy of my report and my apologies again for not having that um, in your packets on Tuesday. Um, we have a lot going on obviously, but uh, I will make every effort to not have that happen again. But since you did just get it and it is, there's a lot going on, so two, two months I'll just hit some highlights. Um, I also want, before I do that though, um, I also want to uh, talk about a couple other things. Um, reminder that uh, we are going to be participating in the, uh, at the Financial Open House this weekend. The Park District is going to be there, and the Board is going to be there. Be there. Um, I know that there's also a school thing going on, and I think we do have some people there. I'm just glad you did that. Yeah, so I that's one of great. Um, this was one of the areas we had talked about yeah. long ago. Uh, the Doughboy rededication um, is on September 24th. Emily, I know for sure, will be there. I will so probably the 29th, will be the 24th. 20. Whatever date it says on there. Yeah, okay. Okay. <laughs> That's not the right Is it, is it the right date? It's, 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 it's the 24th. So the 30th is yeah, a Saturday, time. I think. Yeah. I thought it was the 24th. I think it's the 24th. It's the Sunday. Did they get whatever the date it is. Okay, because I took that directly from them. So my apologies. It's whatever that Sunday is, I believe it's the 24th. And whoever you got this from, Mark Vance. He's got it. He's got the wrong thing. I'll double check. The 29th isn't Friday. Yeah, so it's not Friday. It's Sunday, the 24th at 1 p.m. Emily is going to go. Your family's welcome. I actually am going to go to the Ferris game, I think. So <laughs> that's why I will be there. So just a reminder of that. Thank you. It might be more exciting. Yeah. I, I can't remember who we're playing that day, but I'm sure. <laughs> um, I did also give you a handout that outlines two new laws relating to libraries. One of them is government. Um, the prevailing wage. We used to have to mail that in, now we can just post that on our website. The second one um, actually has more impact for us moving forward, particularly if we ever do anything with these services or have more uh, expensive renovation projects that need to be done. They've raised the amount that we are allowed to spend without going to bid, from 20000 to 25000 and um, that will actually um, make a pretty big difference for us, because <laughs> it's it's easy to get to 20,000 pretty quickly. So those laws actually went into effect upon the governor's signature, which happened a week ago, two weeks ago, whatever the date was. So those are effective right now. So if we, like I said, move forward and have any projects that are over 20,000, we don't have to worry about that because now that's going to change. Um, the other thing that I just wanted to show people is that as soon as we get, uh, we're working on doing this, and this should happen probably by starting in October, um, whenever you get a new library card, we're putting together this packet of information that will go with your card. So this is not complete. I mean, so if you looked at these different sheets, all of the information isn't included. This is just a mock-up. But um, so you'll get this with your library card um, in addition to the latest books and beyond. So um, we're just starting to do that because what, right now we don't uh, really get Question on the last subject, public act. Uh-huh. Uh, isn't that something that the policy committee has to... Somebody needs to look at it because it affects our bylaws. Um, a law always supersedes any policy that you have. Okay. So it doesn't it doesn't matter what your what the policy says if it's law that okay. that so statute we, always supersedes yeah, your policy. But we should when we get to bylaws it we would be, need to change that in our yeah. bylaws. So or indicate in our bylaws and I don't know what it says in terms of spending. But we may want to put some verbiage that reflects that, you know, if that number should ever change, that we abide by whatever the current law is, something like that. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, I just wanted to point out the pieces of paper that I had sitting in front of your places when you came here. Um, and then a few highlights from my report. 
Um, we've got new personnel, we have uh, Wyatt's assistant, Amy Goodchow, she started at the beginning of July. Uh, this new school liaison yeah. librarian, Brittany. Um, <laughs> Dre Hobo started on August 7th, so she is getting up to speed with everything that she received. Dre Hobo. Um, she replaced Brenda Glenn, and you know, just like I said, she's getting up to speed with, uh, with everything. Um, we have two of our computer systems left, and we're replacing them, and they should be replaced by the end of the month. Was there any reason they left? Uh, one of them left to uh, take a teaching position. Okay. Um, and then uh, one of them left to just retire completely. He had retired from his okay. other job, and he was just done working. Okay. So, um, so that's why they left. Um, two maintenance employees have been on a medical leave. Uh, the timing of that could not have been better. <laughs> I say that in uh, not all seriousness. Um, it has made some of the building issues a challenge, and Dave has absolutely risen to the challenge. And um, we've uh, Scott, the other one of our other part-time maintenance people, we've been giving him some more hours to, to help Dave out with some of those tasks. Um, Building, and we'll talk more about this later. Um, we're still working on the kitchen renovation because of some of the other issues that came up, um, both in terms of staffing, plumbing, and electrical issues that we have come about as we've tried to bring things up to code or that have, like I said earlier, just happened at the same time. Um, let's see. And they can read about more of the details in my. <laughs> Are you going to talk about? This article that you have put. Um, oh yeah, this I just thought was an it was an interesting article, the light yeah. and innovation ones, yeah. um, where they're talking about you know libraries that are partnering with other uh, like senior senior residential homes, those kinds of things. But um, it was just something that we thought was interesting that not all of, I didn't know if all of you would see. It. I think we saw it on ILA or some one of the one of the newsletters that I get, but okay. um, not I don't know if everyone's registered for those. So. Um, it was more just information. Okay. Um, I had mentioned briefly to some of the trustees before the meeting started. Um, we still have interest in the 6200 building. Um, no, no offers. Uh, the people that are very interested, the affordable home health care people, um, uh, the mother is in the hospital. So the broker just told me that last week. So we're trying to be sensitive to their their personal situation, but. Um, you know, fingers crossed that they're still interested in pursuing the building. They did have some questions about the um, tax taxes on that building, um, and we were able to provide them with some uh, tax information that hopefully will help them make a decision. Um, we participated in the Fourth of July parade. Um, there's a picture of us <laughs> in my report. <laughs> Since I usually don't put pictures in my report, I thought I would do that. Um, we were inundated with requests about uh, from the Eclipse glasses, and I also attached to my report um, an article that I'm quoted rather extensively in um, about the Eclipse glasses, and I just thought it was interesting. Um, one other thing that we did uh, in August that I'm going to try to do quarterly, um, we had two all-staff meetings. We covered the same thing in each one. They were an hour long. They met but, um, at 8 on a Wednesday and Thursday. In this one, we did... Um, we talked about, I discussed the budget process, talked about the type of library art, how that drives the budget process, that kind of thing. Um, and those were attended by uh, probably about two thirds of the staff who, um, all the feedback that I've received has been really positive because I think for a lot of them, a lot of the staff didn't realize the budget process and then they're starting it now and, and everything that, that went along with that. Um, so that was, that was useful. And there's a few other things, but I think those were the highlights from it. Um, the bathrooms are closed because um, we continue to have plumbing problems, and it is one of the um, quotes that is in your packet that we'll talk about. Um, and Dave is here to actually talk a little bit more about that. Kitchen is 80, 90 ish percent done. Um, yeah, sure. <laughs> we, can, we can take a look at it when we're done if you want. Um, floor has been replaced. Walls are painted, um, new cabinets are in, uh, the countertop has been placed, the sink has been placed, That have, none of that has been permanently attached to the walls yet. Um, we have just today discovered some, um, we wanted to uh, 
retrofit some of the lights with LED lights in there. And when um, they were opened up, perhaps if you could tell us a little bit more about what we found. So, I don't know, for those of you who have older homes or whatever, uh, there used to be an electrical wire called Romex, which is cloth covered and it doesn't sit in conduit. Uh, and that is not code here in Cook County or really about 98% of the state. <laughs> it's not code. Um, so we kind of hit the point where if we continue, we are no longer considered grandfathered in. If we, you know, leave it, then we, we retain our grandfather status. And that's what's everywhere on this floor? Um, well, we do when know, I, I, I don't, it's not, it's not in the lights and YS, correct? That's, we're not sure. <laughs> I'm, not sh I'm not sure because I really added, it's not in here. Right. I can tell you that because all the wiring was re-ran in here. Okay. Um, I'm not sure where in the back else it could be. That being said, they would take care of all that with any lighting renovation that we did okay. on the first floor, or on the, this floor. Uh -huh. So, yeah. yeah, which is, you know, which is, as I mentioned before, would be my goal if we sell the building across the street to put all of that money towards re do, redoing the lighting, because I think that will be, I think it's the one of the more critical things down on this floor, because as we've talked about previously, um, we are, it is becoming more and more difficult to find the floors that light bulbs to replace ones that burn out. and. Um, we believe that will have the biggest impact on the look and feel and you know comfort level in, in the YS department. So, um, so right now in the kitchen, we're not doing anything else with the lighting. We do have a quote from um, MG Electric to upgrade that lighting to LED lighting for $2,500. Um, we have some other priorities right now that we still may choose to do, you know, if the board approves some of these other things that we want to do, um, depending on, on what fund we would have available. But, for right now, the lighting is going to stay the way that it is so that we run, don't run into any problems with, with code violations. My concern is that, um, as I've tried to do with, with everything that we have found that maybe hasn't been, you know, was either under an old code or was never done to code, um, I would like at some point to replace that just because I think it's really important as a public facility that as many of our systems are, are up to current code as possible. So. Um, but the kitchen is coming along. It's not been as smooth or as quick as we had originally hoped, but it desperately needed to be done. I mean, I was, my biggest concern all along had been the moisture that we found and making sure that all of the material and anything that had, you know, suffered any kind of damage um, was removed from the building and we've gotten all that. So, it looks nice. Um, we're getting there. <laughs> but it's yep. kind of no, it's that, any, go ahead. What if any money that was, that's, Semi set aside for the children's area, the youth area, to update it. Is we haven't had to use any of that. Into? So, um, one of the nice things, um, uh, so last year for the 2017 budget, um, there is a budget line called Construction and Progress, and there was $73,000 put into that budget line. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so this, for example, is coming out of that budget. So basically, it's I'm using that line as because we do have an aging facility, and I'm including it in the 2018 budget as well, um, to say you know this is money that we're going to use for some of these unexpected building expenses that may come up. So we have not touched any special reserve money yet. Okay. Um, and that's, that's money that at least, you know, we've talked about using special reserve money for the youth services department by law because you passed the resolution, you know, outlining what you could use the special reserve fund for. We could use special reserve funds for building related expenses. We, do we have any idea what the lighting situation is on this, the rest of this floor? Or is that a dirty question? In terms of what it would cost? In terms of what status are they? Are they, would they have to be good, would it affect our grandfather? And so, I think that's what he said, right? If once we start. Once we, we start. Yeah, well, I know, once we start, we're in trouble. So as, as the lights out there stand, if if I don't touch them and no electrician touches them, we're, They're okay. we're fine. We're, we are considered but grandfather. How far does, how much of this floor is involved? We have no idea. No. Well, it would be the entire use I mean, service department the, at a minimum. Yeah. If not into the youth services workroom, so, it could conceive of it. When we talk about redoing the lighting in the youth services department, as we've talked about, you know, renovating and stuff, 
Um, we have only discussed redoing the lighting on the public portion of the Youth Services Department. We haven't, um, I believe when the architects gave us kind of a ballpark estimate of what the lighting would, would cost, if we did things in phases down here, um, they were only looking at redoing the lighting in the public service area and youth services. But we'll probably have to do it all to keep our... our it would depend on how over. everything was connected, I think. Yeah. So, but we'd have to at least probably look at everything. Yeah. yeah. Right. And that's, you know, the architects and the engineers would come out and the electricians would come out and look at all of that for yeah, us. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, yeah. So the I mean, kitchen lighting as it is right now, though, isn't a hazard. We don't think. I mean, it's anytime you're dealing with this. Okay. It's it's not obviously as stringent as a current code right. is. So, um, yeah. I mean, if this is, I, but if you had cloth wire in your home, you would, you would get a replaced ASAP. Yeah, I would replace it. I mean, I yeah. think fine. We don't necessarily right. need to do it right. ASAP. We can get it done for about twenty five hundred dollars. So, no, but then we have, but to, then start. We have but to start. I don't. I don't think so. I wonder if the grandfather's going to say this. No, because it, you know they would look at it as okay. It's it's a distinct this room. area. It's a distinct area. Like if it was kind of like in the hallway, you know, going between like the doors to go back there and like the staff lounge. You, you know, if you found it up in there, then they would probably say, okay, you got to do this all the way down to the bathrooms. Okay. So technically, we could do it, not the look at some huge bills going at this. Right. I mean, I, it, to me, it sounds like we need to address the lighting. And not that's necessarily fine. ASAP, but yeah, they've given us a recent quote. Cause but in the kitchen, I, I would be of the opinion that if there's $2,500, maybe we should just get yeah, uh, yeah, well, absolutely do have that. So that I can move forward with that, and we can address that. But yeah, I mean, because it is a separate and distinct area, and there are breaks in the type of lighting between the kitchen and other areas of the right. floor, I think we're pretty safe in saying, and we have had the election for the elections, the electricians out to look at it to give us a quote. I think we're pretty comfortable in saying that won't start to impact anything we have to do on the main floor. Yet. Okay. I, then I, I mean, I, I don't know if okay. I have to yeah, I can have some but I think with that. we should maybe just, yeah, I can do that. So, so the kitchen is coming along, we said, not quite as quickly or as smoothly as we had anticipated, but one of the things we are doing is trying to address all these problems as they come up, either through, you know, what we've been renovating or, like I said earlier, things that have coincidentally happened at the same time, like the sump pump and some of the electrical phasing and that kind of thing. Um, so it's been a really busy couple of months on the building. <laughs> you know, especially in then being short-staffed and maintenance has made it um, a little more challenging than, than we had anticipated it would be. But, so that's kind of where we're at. And like I said, welcome to take you guys back there. There's a, a left-handed side, the two uh, employees that are off on sick leave, I don't, it's none of my business what it is, but uh, is it something that's going to affect their work when they get back? Um, it should not, and that's why their um, return dates are, have been so long, um, because of the nature, their essential functions of their position, they were unable to come, given the nature of their their uh, their conditions, yeah. they were unable to come back and um, do any kind of light duty, because it really isn't, so it impacted that. So um, our assumption is based on the doctor, the FMLA paperwork that we have, that they will be able to come back at those return dates um, to full duties. Okay. We're still on the directors. Okay, I'm done. So, <laughs> so <laughs> thank you. No corporate counsel, I assume. Unfinished business committee appointments. So I received um, three emails about uh, interest in certain committees and then um, Stephanie had indicated facilities. Mm -hmm. So I, and you guys can change this, but I made um, some recommendations possibly. Okay. Um, first, I did not include Dr. Kalamick, um, just because of his schedule, oftentimes it's difficult for him, so I didn't include him in this. Um, and Eric, if you want something different, just let me know. But executive committee, as you know, is the, the, the officers, so that's Stephanie and Emily and Carlotta, so that was easy. Um, policy, I know Joanne was interested in being in policy, and um, Barb? I didn't put anything in. I, I know you hadn't, but are you still interested possibly in being on policy? Or is someone else interested? I, so maybe I can say what I have, and then you, you guys can tell me. You can put you want to put So I had Joanne and Barb, finance, I had Carlotta has to be on that as treasurer, and then Eric, did you want to be on finance? And the facilities I have barred and Stephanie. So I mean, I don't have Emily anywhere on here. 
comfortable with that is that facilities would be Barb and Emily, Finance, Carletta, and Eric, Policy, Joanne, and Barb. Stephanie, as president, is an ex officio member of every single mm -hmm. committee. Okay. So if, if facilities you could go to. Yeah. And as Stephanie said, all of that being said, everyone can attend every committee meeting. It's just, it's, you know, some libraries actually don't even use committees that much. They just treat these instances as kind of committees as a whole. I guess my only thought about policy is I don't know, and if you're interested and you certainly have an eye for picking things up, but I don't know if it might make sense to have two new people since we've, I think Carlotta and Barb have maybe gone through them twice and I've gone through them all once. I don't know if we've... Yeah, I think, I think just in general, the um, building facility. Building, building would you be willing also. to we do Barb and Stephanie's facilities and Emily? Would you be okay with policy? Sure. Okay. Is that policy is the one so that's been most effective? I think that's the one where you don't want two new people, right? Yeah. No policy. I think two new people would be better. Should be. Yeah. Yeah. You're saying, oh, yeah. To, to, as fresh eye to yeah. reviewing to the policy. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, is that, so and it, go ahead. I mean, I can't recite it by heart yet. I think, and again, <laughs> that being said. If you're interested in anything else, you are always welcome to come to those committee meetings. You're not prohibited from doing that. So. And I, I, my feel, I wasn't here for when the first floor was remodeled, but if we do start doing quite a bit of work, we're we, probably we all doing, doing that as a yeah, there would be, as a, you know, unless there was some minor thing. Group. But yeah, I, I, I think when and and um, Dave and well, uh, maybe not so much Dave, but uh, Blanche, I think can tell us better. But I think that. Building issues, they met pretty much always as a whole. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they had a lot of special meetings. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. yeah, if we started doing anything with down here, that would be. Wait, so, so, okay, so I, I have a few different seconds. So, so you think you need Joanne for policy and Barb and Stephanie for but, facility? Is that what yes. You're thinking? Yes. That's, Go ahead. Just to let you know that the policy meets. Quarterly, nine thirty quarterly. But you could change. We can change the, the time. It's just yeah, the time for me. Because yeah. preschool. So the problem is that with know, for the committee really members, really well, here's the other thing. So for the committee committee members, you first and foremost have to pick a time that works for them. So for example, if you work during the day, you can't make that. Then we would have them in the evening. The other thing to keep in mind when we schedule any meetings is that we are really kind of required to try and schedule those meetings at a time that if there were interested public, that they would be able to attend. Reason, with reasonable ease. Right, right. So, so it's something to keep in mind. And so, you know, it could be argued no one has done that for us because we don't have a lot of interest in our committee meetings in particular. Well, um, not anymore. Right, not anymore. Is that some people could say 9.30 in the morning really doesn't work for me. You know, most people work during the day, that kind of thing. But that's that's been okay for us that we haven't had that problem. So, so we don't, we're not bound by those same times that we've historically met or anything like that. It's, it's pretty much, you know, who can meet when, and, you know, is it reasonable, all that kind of thing. Right. So. I just wanted to let them know that, it's, you know, it could be, you, you make the time. Right, all right. We did it at 9.30 because. Yeah, and we were meeting every month for a while, but now it's it's quarterly. quarterly. Wow. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I can go over this again, just and you guys can decide if you want, but actually according to the bylaws, the president does appoint people. Okay, so uh, we're thinking, <laughs> Joanne and Emily for policy, Carlotta and Eric for finance, and Barb and myself for f facilities. Yes. And obviously the executive is what it is. Right. Mm -hmm. And those would be my suggestions, unless anybody is opposed to that. Okay. So um, we don't really have to vote on that okay. as long as you decide, and then uh, what happens is it just gets updated on the website. So we don't know, you know, what committee appointments. Okay. Uh, so I don't need to write that down. Correct. You're, we're not voting on it. Okay. okay. And then new business was the, oh, the, no, sorry, the committee <laughs> think through me. We're looking at the policies that the policy committee um, did this last week. Meeting room policy. I did 
did have a question about that. Okay. You go and, and let me just, we took out the study room procedures of okay. this policy and added additional hourly rate. Um, that's the only change on this um, policy. And probably, did we, we, this is not changed. It was this, yeah, this was already, uh, the study room was taken out right. already. Right. I see this proposal here. <laughs> Sorry, I should change it to <laughs> or whatever. But no. Yeah. Um, for the newer people, I don't know if you realize, the staff, uh, the department heads meet before we do. And they look it through and make sure it's keeping up with what's really happening, mm -hmm. etc. And sometimes they make a lot of drastic changes, sometimes they leave it almost identical. Then we, committee, board committee, looks at it again and makes changes if they feel necessary. Okay. And if they, those changes affect the staff, it would go back to the staff before it would come up for a vote. So vote. before, as Barb said, before the policy committee sees any of the, um, and there's a schedule, and it probably is included in your bylaws when we review the policies. Um, before the policy committee meets and reviews that, um, this is, uh, the department heads review that, I review it, um, relevant staff look at it. So for example, the meeting room policy was reviewed by myself, by Natalia, the head of adult services, by Bob, who handles most of our programming, and so knows the kinds of questions and things that he's normally dealing with that he's got to either ask or so some clarifications based on that. Um, and then also all of the department heads have looked at it as well. So um, there's a lot of steps before it even goes to the policy committee and then, um, when the policy committee meets, or any of the committees meet, we make whatever changes, and then I bring back the, the, the final um, recommendations. From the, then, the, then the committees will bring any recommendations to the board, whether or not you should approve it, or approve it changes, or not approve it, or whatever. So, you had a question? I did just on the first page, and excluding functions or activities that material and materially and substantially interfere with mm -hmm. the function, purpose, and mission of the library. Mm -hmm. Would that include, like, the KKK just based on... Right. It would have to be, um, in practice, should any group that we think might have the potential to be um, disruptive mm -hmm. to normal library services, we would probably um, get the library attorney involved right away. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, but we, at least initially, would not, because we are a public right. building, would not be able to turn them down because we did not agree with, right. with you know, the philosophy they're espousing right. or whatever. Yeah. So, um, the concern would probably be more who would come because they were coming. Right. right. And then we would be able to treat those things as disruptions um, based on our policy. Okay. So. And then in terms of selling things on the second page, is that something that says that you could give permission? Is that something you would theoretically run by us if somebody was going to sell um, something? If it seemed, I mean, you'd probably when, say no to something. That when we're talking legal. about people selling things, what we're talking about is not someone like kind of like using the next room to sell their wares. What okay. we're talking about is someone, if we have an author and wants to sell their oh, books, okay. if we have a performer who has, you know, has CDs, CDs. Okay. if you know, someone's talking about making candles and they want to sell some of their supplies, okay. that's what we're talking okay. about. Um, it, it, so the, certainly the spaces cannot be used for someone to set up a storefront. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's just not allowed for our policy. Um, we're talking about like, in conjunction with programming. That makes sense. I just said didn't occur yet. And on a practical level, um, it would be very difficult because um, to to get board approval for that. Yeah. Uh, because I oftentimes don't. We oftentimes don't know. We should right. find out like a week or two ahead of time. Yeah. That you know. Oh, can I sell my book? Can I sell yeah. my CD? Which CD? Yes. So that's what we're talking okay. about when we talk about selling wares. Okay. That makes sense. So. Okay. So. I, you, if what would what did the policy committee recommend that the board do? The full board. We, uh, this this one just to, to approve this one. Thing. No, we'll approve them all. You can, but there might be some. I would say do them individually do because you might have some that say I, don't I, don't care. Care. I have questions or whatever. Okay. So I would do them separately. Yeah. Was that a roll call for the policy? As long as it's not money, it's, it's yeah. You don't have to. You can do it. Okay. Or a significant verbiage change. Okay. So you have to make a motion. Or, yeah. The motion is made by. I, the, yeah, the I will motion. Technically, the motion is made by the person who presented. 
That would be you. Oh, okay. so, I will do that. The, the motion is made. Then it's okay. seconded by anybody. Okay. okay, I'll make a motion for the board to approve the revised meeting room policy. I will second it. Thank you and very I will much. Approve. <laughs> and it's theoretically all we all done before the discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Nay. Any nays? Sorry. It's okay. No nays. No nays. <laughs> <laughs> the horse left the barn. Okay, the next one is the internet access policy. No changes were made on this policy. First, the motion has to be set in order. <laughs> Make a motion to approve the internet. And then the discussion. Um, the oh, motion, we have to approve it. The motion allows for the discussion. I'm just trying to get you up here. <laughs> okay, yeah, no, that's fine. Know. Okay. Then I, I read all this stuff when I was president. <laughs> you see, so I'm putting it on your your plate now. Okay, now I'll make a motion to for the board to approve the internet access policy. I will second it. Now there can be discussion. Okay. Any discussion? discussion? No changes were made, so. Well, go ahead, Eric. Oh, just in the verbal, I mean, it's just I was reading through it. So, uh, with a, with a parent can uh, approve verbal, uh, verbally approve any child from 8 to 12 to use the internet. Um, is that uh, something, I mean, in past practice, that's something that's been effective in terms of? Yes, yeah, yes. Uh, <clears throat> that, um, that's actually been a practice that we've done for years. Um, since we started, I mean, you know, like a parent coming in and they hadn't gone through, we used to have a very um, more convoluted process to allow children to access the internet back when it was less common. And then um, as things went on, it, we had a number of instances and what kind of prompted us to do this years ago was parents were down here, their kids were down here, they don't want to run upstairs to circulation to sign, you know, the form or whatever. So we started, you know, saying the parent was standing there, they could give verbal permission for the child to use the internet. Um, this is a little bit different. I mean, there's there's no um, there was no changes between what the policy committee saw and what the full board is seeing. But what is different is that we um, broke out the uh, computer. I'm sorry. We had right now, if you look at our policies, they're internet and technology. We broke that, and it's one policy, and it's kind of this jumble of you know, public use computers, technologies, all these different things. Um, we separated them out um, between internet access, which talks about you know, actually accessing the internet, so it talks about things like your devices, that sort of thing, and then um, computer and technology use policy, which is focused more on things that are used in the library. So there is a, it's very different from our current policy because we did separate those two functions. But the content is, content is, is, is right. the same. Basically. Any other discussion for the internet access policy? Should we voice vote for that too? Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, all in favor say aye. 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 Any names? Computer and technology use policy. I'm going to make a motion for the board to. Approve the inter computer and technology use policy. I'll second. Any discussion? All right. Do we want to take a voice vote then for that one? Um, people say aye. 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 Any nays? Motion for to present to the board the donations policy. Um, second. I'll second. I couldn't tell if you were <laughs> asking or <laughs> saying yeah, you were. Sure. Make sure I'm <laughs> yeah. Any discussion on this one? Yeah, just one question. Mm -hmm. Uh, under monetary donations in the back of the policy, uh, the library board will accept <coughs> will accept any dedicated uh, de donation only if the donation is consistent with the library uh, uh, line. Mm -hmm. Shouldn't uh, shouldn't that be may accept? I mean, they still have to approve any donation that's you know, especially in terms of based on the value. Of the I mean, you know, for instance, uh, like you know, for 
uh, she put a bunch of KKK or someone wanted to donate, and there, I've seen that in the past where a group has donated, made a donation, and it's someone, someone that made the library, made a post, even if they followed in the. We actually, garbage. we actually turned out a donation several years ago here. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's why I'm saying so. We'll accept. I mean, it was all my fault. Um, <laughs> well, we can say we say we'll accept, and then we say, but only if the donation is consistent. But I have no problem with changing that to may. But that's what I'm saying because if it's will, it's like it's like saying shall. That we shall. Yep, yeah, that's fine. I can change that to may. Does anyone have any issue with that? Board says the library board will. Is that where you? Yes. Yeah, so yeah, Eric is suggesting that we change that to the library board may accept any donation. So do we re motion then to accept it um, with with the, the as amended as amended? Yeah. Okay. I would like to make a motion to. So you're saying you're, you can amend your motion to accept the amended or the, accept well, the policy I, I as amended. I motion to accept the policy, the donations policy as amended. And then I'm going to do a roll call. And then, yeah, I guess a roll call needs to be. Okay, so let's change. Uh, Gray? Yes. Facebook, yes. Lonzo? Yes. Melnick? Yes. Helen Yes. Gonzalez? Yes. Okay, I want to make a motion for the board to accept the policy loan, fine, and service policy. I will second that. I think it's, is it the one that's just. Materials? Yeah, I got fun. Yeah, yeah. it's just it it's yeah. Material. Yeah, we are actually we, so um, <laughs> there are some uh, significant changes to the presentation of this material of, of this mm -hmm. policy. Not so much to the actual. We haven't changed. Um, I take that back. We did make a few changes to uh, loan terms. DVDs, CDs, and laptops. We uh, extended their loan periods. We gave people a little bit longer for each of those items. Um, and then what used to be called services, um, we're now calling borrowing privileges, which makes more sense because basically it's saying this is what this type of card allows you to check out. These are the privileges that are associated with this type of card. So, um, so some of the uh, Labeling for materials and borrowing privileges is different than the way that it's currently presented, but fines remain the same. Um, most checkout periods remain the same. Renewal amounts, ren renewal allowances remain the same. Any other discussion? Do a voice vote? All in favor say aye. 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 Any nays? Okay, the next policy that I want the board to accept is the homebound service services policy. Um, this this policy was not changed. I will second the motion to approve the homebound services policy. Questions? Comments? Some things that came up for the policy, so this was a lot to approve.